morning, everybody. <laughs> if I have not had the pleasure of meeting you yet, please make sure we d- get to do that after service. My name is Michelle. I am the pastor's wife here, and I am so glad that you have made One Hope to be part of what you're doing during this weekend. Hasn't it been a beautiful weekend? I mean, the temperatures have been great. The sun has been out. It's been a great spring weekend. And we want to say hello to all of you who are also joining us online. Would you please say hello to April, um, who is hosting you today if you're online. And no matter if you're here in this room or if you are watching online, would you take just a moment, like and share this video, because we want all of Facebook world to know that there is good news that's being put out for people to hear about Jesus today. Well, we are ending up a two-week series that's entitled Fight. And for many of us, we face and fight battles every single day. Here you come. You need a boxing glove on me? I need a boxing glove. Okay. All right. We fight traffic, right? We fight places (laughs) to get a good parking place at Walmart right? Um, We have to have fights with our bosses and our co-workers, and we even face a fight with our spouse. Not us. Not us. Wonder twin powers. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) You might have a fight with your siblings. You might have fights with your kids. And whether you're feeling like you're winning the fight or maybe you're down for the count, we learned last week that our fight is not a natural fight. That's right. Our fight is a spiritual fight that we are in. And rather than getting into a fight with our boss or our spouse or the person that's sitting in that car that was really rude on I-4, mm-hmm. um, rather than getting it into them, maybe we need to take a step back to see what that fight's really all about. So, he made me put this boxing glove on. Yeah, I'm going to let you take this one with you. Okay. And maybe <laughs> you need to put your headgear on, put your mm. mouthpiece in, and let's get ready to hear what God says today about fights. Come on. Heavyweight champion of the world, right? I don't know about that. (laughs) But welcome, welcome. Hey, if I haven't met you, my name is David. And uh, it's a joy for Michelle and I to pastor One Hope. And uh, if you're new here, uh, One Hope is about five and a half years old. Uh, We started here in September 2016, right in this very room. We've we've always been here. And, uh, you know, hopefully we won't always be here. (laughs) But uh, we are excited to be able to partner with Sinopolis right now, and it's a good place. Y'all got those comfortable seats to sit back in. I say we got the most comfortable seats for church in all of Polk County, right? Maybe Osceola too. <laughs> but hey, we're, we're glad that you're here, and uh, we face fights every day, just as Michelle said. And Anybody feel like you were in a fight this week, maybe? Anybody get, yeah, sometimes it's. I mean, any of y'all that drive on I-4, man, whew, I've had to pray for you guys. I, I told y'all I drove on there last week because the kids were in fine arts in Orlando, and we were driving back and forth, and boy, I had to have a prayer meeting just for uh, getting out of that. But, uh, you know, uh, sometimes we don't feel like we're just in a fight. Sometimes we feel like we get knocked down. You know, somebody somebody sucker punches us, or, or uh, maybe some of you feel like, Maybe some of you feel like you won some rounds this week. That'd be a good thing. And maybe you had some success and there were some good things that happened. That's good. Uh, anybody ever heard of the uh, uh, boxer George Foreman? I got a picture of him up there. George Foreman, some of y'all are like, George Foreman, isn't that the grill guy? Come on. <laughs> He's the one helping me to go lean and eat lean with his Foreman fat-reducing grilling machine, right? Uh, he was... he. <laughs> yeah, this is not advertisement for that. But before he started all the grilling stuff, he was a boxer. He was a heavyweight boxer that uh, he actually only lost a, a handful of, of matches during his career. And uh, he was a, a fierce competitor. And Foreman uh, was known to say a lot of things. And uh, some of them could be interpreted as, man, that's very deep. And other things that he said, it was like, Man, that guy got hit in the head one too many times. Uh, <laughs> hey, here's a couple of things he said. He said, the referee is going to be the most important person in the ring tonight, besides the fighters. <laughs> okay. Uh, how about this one? Generally, 
when there's a lot of smoke, there's just a whole lot more smoke. I think that was one of those where he got hit a couple extra times. But this was a good one. He says, I cannot remember a time in my life when I was not getting into fights. And I don't know about you, maybe you grew up that way too. Kind of seemed to manage to get out of fights growing up. I remember some big fights at my school. There was a big fight at our junior high. I'll never forget it. Uh, it was one of those days that I was walking to the library, which was kind of a block down the road and across the street. And about time I got across the street and about, you know, 20 paces, I looked over at the school campus and there was like 300 kids going at it. And I was like, oh, Jesus, let me get to the library so I can be safe. You know, I don't want to get into that mess. It was awful. But maybe you grew up where there was fights a lot. Maybe fights in your schools, fights in your home, fight in your neighborhood. Uh, fights are not always physical. Fist fights, right? Uh, but life can be a grind. Life can be a fight. It can be a struggle. It's this constant thing that you're going against. And uh, the Apostle Paul had a lot to say, and he wrote a lot in Scripture uh, that, that, that can tell us that life can be a fight sometimes. And here's the way he put it in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. He says, I fought a good fight. Uh, that's a positive thing, you know. I, I, we don't always think about it as negative, but I fought a good fight, he says. And I finished my race, and I've kept my faith. Like, hey, just because you're in a fight doesn't mean you've got to lose. Just because it's a struggle doesn't mean you have to get knocked down. He, he goes on to say in 1 Corinthians 9, 26, Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer just beating the air. You know, there's a purpose in the things that I'm going through. There's a purpose in the way I approach things. There's there's something behind me and inside of me that's helping me as I face these struggles every day. Ephesians chapter number 6, verse 12 says, to remind us, we read this last week, that our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Hey, it's not that guy that cuts you off on the, on the road. It's not the, it's not the person in line in front of you at Walmart that, you know, they only had three things, and you're like, oh, this is going to be fast. And then all of a sudden, their spouse comes, and they got a buggy that's overflowing. And they, you don't mind if we just come up. My wife's right there. You're like, don't mind. <laughs> of course I mind, right? You know? and it's like, but our fight is not against these people. It's a spiritual battle. And while we may see some of these things play out in the natural, it's a spiritual battle fight that we're in every day and if if we try to fight these fights in the natural we're going to get rocked and we're going to feel like we're getting put on the mat lots of times we're going to have a lot of frustration and failure and disappointments and struggles as we go through that some of you guys in this room and some of you watching online right now you're in a fight right now Maybe some of you are watching online today because it was a fight to get to church and you decide, I'll turn the, I'll turn the Facebook on. Easier. Let's don't, let's don't contend with this any longer. While we see this and while we go through this, there are things that you're like, I didn't ask for this. You know, uh, this isn't a fight that I brought on myself. I didn't instigate it, you know, but you're still in this fight. And so we have to learn how to deal with it. How do we deal with this struggle that's not against flesh and blood? We've got to realize that we have a real enemy, the devil. And he, he's going to do everything he can to, to, to stop us and hold us back and restrain us and, and keep us from God's purpose and plan and destiny. But what we realize is, realizing this is a spiritual thing, we've got to realize this. That the victory is already won through Jesus. See, if we don't recognize it, if we don't realize it, if we don't do something about this spiritual fight, we're going to get taken out. And the good news is that, 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 that Jesus won the victory already. So through Christ, we can have 
victory. We can be the champion. We can live like champions uh, because we're not fighting for victory. We're fighting from victory. Ephesians chapter number 1, verse 3 says this, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Man, skip on down to verse 7. It says, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. Everything that Jesus has, now we have that by faith. God makes us victorious as we align our lives with Christ. Pressing on in that chapter, verses 18 and the beginning of verse 19, says, I pray that the eyes of your hearts may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope. Know the hope to which you are called uh, which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his in incomparably great power for us who believe. See, when you believe in Jesus, you now have access to this incomparable power of God that empowers us to live differently. We don't have to live like everybody else. We don't have to struggle like everybody. We don't have to fight like everybody else. Yeah, do we have hardships? Sure. Do we go through things? Yes. This doesn't exempt us from that. But hey, I'm not fighting on my own now. The Holy Spirit is inside of me. And He fights for me. And In fact, there's times when, when I don't even know how to pray. The Bible says that, the Holy Spirit makes intercession in me with groaning sometimes that I don't even understand. Helps us to live differently. God won the battle through Jesus so that we can win and that we can be able to fight and fight in this life like a champion. That's what I titled this message today. Fight like a champion. The trouble is that some of us as believers, some of us as Christians, we don't fight like champions. And we could have this championship belt because God's given us the victory and we could have this in our life every day. But we don't always fight like we know that Jesus already won the battle. Jesus already won the victory. We act like we don't know. We fight like we don't have any power. We don't have any stamina or strength against uh, uh, the things that are coming against us every day. Every time a temptation comes against us, we, we just kind of give up and throw in the towel. Every time a storm comes our way, we feel like, man, this one's probably going to take me out. You know, and we, we have this kind of defeated attitude. But yet, we don't want to live like that. And we don't have to live like that. Because God has already won the fight through Jesus Christ. Look at your neighbor, tell him, fight like a champion. Come on, look at the other person that you avoided the first time and say, tell them, fight like a champion, right? All right, how do we do that, though? We're going to go back to the Apostle Paul and kind of go into Paul's boxing school today, right? And uh, we're going to learn how to fight like a champion we're going to learn how to live in victory. So I'm going to take you to Ephesians chapter 5. And because uh, my dad's here again, it's okay to read the Bible in church. And we're going to read uh, chapter 5. We're going to read verses 1 to 17. If you have your Bible, you can read along. If you got the Version Bible app, you can use that. Or you can just look on the screen. That's fine too. Uh, but it says this in verse 1. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God verse uh, 3 but among you there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality 
or of any other kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper for God's holy people. Verse 4 says, Nor should there be uh, obscenity, foolish talk, coarse joking, which is, are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. Y'all just curl your toes up right now. I'm not trying to step on them. All right, I'm just reading the Bible. Verse 5 says, For this you can be sure. No immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, of, uh, uh, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them, for... You were once uh, darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It's, shame, uh, it's shameful even to mention what the diso disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. And everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it said, wake up sleeper, rise from the dead, and, and, and Christ will shine on you. This is one of my favorite uh, verses in the whole scripture right now. Verse 15. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. I want to dig into this passage for the rest of the time we have this morning and see what Paul says to us in his fighting boxing school uh, today about living and fighting like a champion. And the first thing is this. I think he says out of this passage, don't fight in the dark don't fight in the dark verse 3 says uh, but among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or the kind of impurity or greed because these are improper for God's holy people see Paul's writing to church folks he's writing to the people in Ephesus that are part of that church and they're not unbelievers these are people that have received the grace and the, the mercy and the forgiveness of God and They've experienced the power of God in their life. The light's kind of been turned on for them. They're no longer in darkness. And Paul's saying, see all that God has done. See the light that he's shown into your life. Remember that you didn't start this way. You started out in darkness. Have you ever tried to navigate in the dark? It's not easy. How about at the house? Like, man, we, we, we've we been having some work done at our house this week and uh, really the last couple weeks, but this past week they were inside doing some things for us and and, and, and so some things had to be moved around, right? Got to move some furniture away from the walls. Got to, you know, so everything, got to move some on this. Our house is a mess. And then chaos. This guy was sanding and man, we got white stuff everywhere and we got these dark black wood floors and we vacuumed and we mopped and this still looks like there's a thin layer there we're going to be doing it for days i think but he's coming back tomorrow so i gotta wait till he's done he's doing a great job by the way <laughs> but it's the chaos of during this time and i was having to move some stuff into our bedroom out of the living room and and michelle came in and she said honey that can't stay there she's like what if we get up in the middle of the night and it's dark one of us is going to break our necks. We're going to forget that you put that t little end table or your guitar case or, you know, whatever. You put that stuff in here. We're going to fall. Anybody have little children and you're sneaking in and you step on a Lego? Man, that's like a grenade or something, an IED for a kid. I mean, it's, it's awful. You step on that and you're trying to be quiet and you're like, ah, you know, uh, it, it's is hard navigating in the dark. When you and I are away from God, it's darkness. And it's, and it's a desperate place. It's hard to 
navigate through life in that way. And Paul says, hey, don't go back to the place that you used to be in. Don't, don't turn the lights out. Don't go back into the darkness. He knows that we all have this temptation to go back to the darkness. But if you fight in the darkness, you're always going to lose. One of, one of my friends, they, they pastor a, a church up in Eustis. And uh, his wife posted something yesterday, and it just was like so appropriate. She was talking about this dream she has had over and over about how when she first came to the Lord, and, and how she, uh, she had this dream that she's standing at an open grave, and it's her grave. And, and the casket is laid there. And she's standing there with Jesus, and, and she has this overwhelming desire, and she jumps into the grave, and she opens up the casket, and she starts taking off the grave clothes off of her body that's laid in the casket that's dead, and starts putting them on. And Jesus is saying, what are you doing? And she's just like fighting this desire. And I think so many of us have this struggle that, that like we live in the light and yet it's so easy for us to click the light off and step right back into the darkness. If we live so close to the edge of where we used to be. We, we, we haven't made that much progress from, from what, what our life used to be. And so, it, it, you know, we, we, man, I'm with Jesus now and I'm in the light. But it's not that far to just take a turn back. I mean, I'm in earshot. I can still hear people drawing me back this way. I can take just a few steps and I'm back in the darkness. And what I want to encourage you today and what Paul is saying is we can't live in the darkness and we can't fight in the darkness and ever win. We're always going to lose. Paul gives examples in this passage of two specific things, sexual immorality and greed. Basically saying, I, I, I'll put myself and my desires above God if I choose these things. And what I'm putting myself and the things that I think I want or the things that I think I need above what he says he wants from me. God wants you to be, uh, uh, God wants him to be your all in all. That's what he wants. He, he wants to be the thing that you are most passionate about. But anytime we allow something else to replace that love and desire to follow him, we're compromising and we're missing out on what God wants to do in us. And we're stepping back into the darkness. So number one, we can't fight in the dark. Number two, Paul says that we ought to live as children of the light. Verses uh, 8 through 11 says, For you are once in darkness, but now you're in the light of the Lord. Live as children of the light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Bring the light of God to every part of your life. Let the light of Christ shine brightly within you and let it shine brightly from your life. Expose the deeds of darkness around you. Don't try to hide them or cover them up. Expose them. So many tr people try to live their lives with hidden issues, right? I don't want people to see my junk or my dysfunction. So I try to keep it hidden. I keep my garage door closed, y'all. Because there's junk in the garage. It's not neat. Nor Some people, they got neat and organized. I'm like, I don't like y'all. <laughs> no, actually, I love y'all. I wish I could be like y'all. Uh, but I, I, you know, I try to keep that stuff hidden. And the thing is, so many people in our lives, we got issues. We got things that were junk in our life. We, I'm going to keep that door closed. I don't want anybody to see that. And, and we'll go weeks sometimes or months. Or, or There's people that, that have gone years trying to hide their issues. Not want anyone to know. But can I tell you, you may fool some of the people some of the time, but you won't fool everybody all the time. 
And in spite of all of that, God always knows. You can't hide it from him. You may hide it from your spouse or your kids or your, your employer, but you'll never hide anything from the Lord. What's hidden in the darkness will never be overcome. James chapter 5, verse 16 says, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. You need to bring that stuff out of the darkness and live in the light. Let's stop pretending that everything is okay. How are you today? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. Come on now. <laughs> the reason we say that, though, is because a lot of times nobody really wants to hear about your junk. And shame on us as, a, as believers and as a community of faith that we don't want to say, come on, really, tell me what's going on. I want to hear. Not because I want to gossip and go tell everybody else about what, did you hear what they said? No. But that, hey, I'm, I'm here for you. I'm going to pray for you. And hey, rather than just saying I'm going to pray for you, could we actually pray for people? Like right then, like it's okay in the hallway, it's okay in the parking lot to pray for somebody. It's okay on a phone or uh, text. or you can, you can pray for somebody. And just pray that God will touch them and help them through their situation. And I know it's hard. Some of you guys... You're going through hard stuff, and it's, it's hard to come clean with that or expose that to others. You think, what will they think about me? What, what will their attitude be? What would, what would they, uh, you know, maybe they don't want to be around me anymore. Maybe they'll tell others about that. I know there's trust levels that have to be overcome. But, hey, I, I want our church, and I want you guys to be people that can love one another enough and we can help one another. That's what Jesus says, the effectual prayer of a righteous man. It said, roll back to that verse for me for a second, in James 5. Confess your sins to each other. It didn't say, like, go to the pastor. It didn't say, go find the lead team. Go, go call the prayer line for the guy on TV. He, he, he said, confess your faults to each other. That's about relationship and being in connection and you know Derek and Jeff they talk about it all the time with our groups and all it, how important it is to find a community to connect so that we can have people that when we're going through something or we need to reveal something we can say hey can you pray for me I'm going through this I want to encourage you encourage you today reach out to people around you here at One Hope Hey, you don't have to confess your deepest, darkest secrets today. Some of you are like, whew. First time here and they're about to make me confess to somebody. No, I'm just telling you, reach out to people around you. Uh, 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 because you can start building a relationship. It starts with just telling somebody your name. And I know it gets awkward. Some of you are like, yeah, but I've seen them three or four times and they've told me their name and I forgot and I'm not good. It's all right. Just I'm gonna give you the I'm gonna give you the secret sauce right here. Okay, just go up to them and say, "Hey, my name's David. I don't know if you remember me. What's your name again?" Okay, it disarm people. They'll be okay. They'll tell you. They'll tell you what their name is. Get their names. Start building a relationship with people and find other believers that you can lock arms with people that are working to be on this journey just like you are to live in the light and when you do man your world's going to change and guess what it needs to happen beyond just right here in the seats where you say hey my my name's david you don't probably don't remember me but you know but maybe you need to say hey could we go have coffee this week could we go have lunch or hey i i can't afford to go to a nice p restaurant but how about we go to McDonald's and just see if their ice cream machine's working? You know? <laughs> uh, we'll just go get ice cream. And if they're not, we'll wait till it's not Sunday and we'll go to Chick-fil-A and we'll get an ice dream, y'all. It's good. Are y'all good at twisting? Oh, y'all. 
Y'all stop talking about that stuff. <laughs> go get a coffee. Go to lunch. Find people you can have life with and pray for one another. Encourage one another. Don't wait for hope groups to start up again. Start today. Find somebody that you can begin to build a relationship. So here we are. Don't fight in the dark. Live as children of the light. Here's the last thing. Remember your why. All right? Remember your why. It's like one of those Stephen Covey things, right, from the highly effective habits of people. And uh, uh, every great fight movie has a training montage, right, where they're going through the basics, building their stamina, their character. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? And Rocky, he's like going in there and he's beating up on the sides of beef, right? He's, he's punching the, the, the sides of beef there in the freezer, and then he's like jogging, uh, all through Philly, and then he runs up those steps. I don't even know what the name of that place is, but my sister goes there all the time. And they actually have a statue of Rocky there now holding up his fist because that's what he did in the movie. You run up the thing, and he's, he's holding his fist up like, I'm going to be a champion. We, we, they have these montages of training. Y'all remember Karate Kid, right? Daniel San, wax on, wax off, right? Paint the fence, <laughs> You know, sand the floor, right? You learn all, he learned, he didn't know he was training. He didn't know he was learning. Sometimes we don't realize we're in training, but he was in training. And then he, he's like, I'm tired of this. It's a lot of hard work, right? And Mr. Miyagi's like, come on. And he like, you know, he says, wax off. And he throws a punch and he's like, Whoosh. he blocks it. And he blocks the other one. And he's going through and all of a sudden he realizes he's learned more than he thought he had learned. And he was ready for the fight because he was in the training. Uh, in the front part of every fight movie, they establish the reason for the fight, right? Rocky, he wanted to prove himself, you know. And Daniel, he was, you know, bullied by Johnny. You know, Johnny's going to bully him. Now they got the new Cobra Kai and it's like flip the script and they're saying Johnny was bullied by Daniel. I don't know. Uh, I haven't watched all those. But... Uh, you know, Daniel was not going to be pushed around, right? So they've got a why for their fight. There's a re they're not just out there picking a fight. They're, 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 there's a why to the fight that they're in in, this, in in pretty much every movie. And that why is what drives them in the training, right? You remember the one when uh, Rocky was fighting the, the guy from Russia and he was out training out and they, he's like running around pumping uh, logs or something like that. He didn't, he didn't have weight, so he picked up, like, big logs, and he's, like, using them for his weight. See, he's, like, he's got a why because he's going up against this guy. And I want to tell you, it's important for us to recognize our why. Why are we in this battle? Why are we in this fight? It's important to have a, a good why, and as Christians, we have the best why. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2 said this, Follow God's example there as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Or why is that in, in spite of the fact that we don't deserve it, in spite of the fact that we keep messing up and we keep failing, God still loves us. He loves us so much that he, he gave his son to go through the pain and the punishment and the torture that he did on the cross that was really meant for us, that we were deserving of that. Yet God picked us. He chose us. Our why is that in spite of all that, he loves us as dearly love children our response should be thank you god thank you he picked us up he he paid the price for us and it's the best why in the world one more story for you before we close in, in 1990 buster douglas was a boxer that fought the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world by the name of Mike Tyson. Y'all remember him, right? The odds were 42 to 1 against Buster Douglas. 
No one thought that he would ever win. I mean, Tyson was one of those that, you know, you paid all this money to see the fight, and he knocked the guy out in the first five seconds or something like that. And so nobody thought that, that, that Douglas would ever be able to, to beat him. But the fight gets going, and, and to everyone's surprise, they find themselves in the eighth round, and he's still going. He's still fighting. He's still, he's still in this thing. And, 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 and uh, uh, in that round, in the eighth round, Tyson landed a punch on Douglas and it knocked him to the mat. And everybody thought, well, this is it. They finally, he finally got him. He got that hit in, and it knocked him to the mat. And y'all know there's always that 10 count, right? The referee count, one, two, and they got to get up before 10 because if they don't, you know, it's considered a knockout. He's counting, he's counting, he's counting. And he gets all the way to nine, and Douglas is able to get himself up off the mat. Unbelievably, everybody's shocked. He's up. And, and, and so he makes it to the end of that round. And everybody thought, well, well, okay, he, 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 he made it. He got up before 10, and he made it to the end of the eighth round. But ninth round, man, Tyson's going to hit him so hard, so fast, it's going to be over here at the, the, the beginning of the ninth. And as soon as the bell ring, uh, rang for the, the ninth round, everybody thought Buster's going down. But he had something that I don't think anybody realized that was driving him on the inside. Uh, he, he, he makes it through the ninth round. And in the tenth round, out of nowhere, Buster Douglas delivers an uppercut that sends Mike Tyson flying back to the mat. And Tyson can't get up. And they're counting, one, two, three. They get all the way to eight, nine, ten. People are going crazy. They can't believe it that he knocked out Mike Tyson. And he couldn't get up. It's one of the most epic comebacks in sports history. After the fight, of course, he was asked by all the reporters, man, how did that happen? How did you do that? How did you overcome being knocked down in the eighth and make it through the ninth and and actually land a blow in the tenth round that could knock out Mike Tyson. Everybody everybody thought he could never be knocked out. His response was earlier this week. My mom and I were at the barber shop and she was bragging to everyone that her boy was gonna, gonna beat Mike Tyson. And Douglas was like, Mom, take it easy. Come on. These guys are never going to let me hear it. <laughs> Live it down. I might find another barbershop. I won't be able to come back here. You know, uh, this is Mike Tyson. And she was like, no, she would not hear anything anybody said. She was like, my son is going to win. My son's going to beat Mike Tyson. Two days before the fight, Douglas's mom passed away. And he told the reporters that all through the fight, all he could think about was winning for his mom. All he could think about was hearing his mom's words in his ears saying, my son's going to win this fight. And I'm doing this, and I did this for my mom. He's like, I'm going to fight. I'm going to push through. I'm doing this for my mom. He had a why that nobody even knew. The why is so important. It drove him to victory that day, and it's going to drive you to victory too. We got the best why you could ever imagine. And as we close this morning, I want to tell you, our God chose us. He chose you. He sent his son to to die for you. And he's fighting for us. The Bible says that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. He's, He's on our side. He's cheering us on and he's saying, come on, come on, you can do it. He's fighting for us and He's already won the victory for us. So can I encourage you when temptation comes, you can say thanks, but no thanks. My God's chosen me. He's fighting for me, and actually, He's already won the victory. That's how you live a Christian life. 
That's how you fight like a champion. Let me pray for you. Will you close your eyes and bow your heads just for a moment? Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you so much for your love and your grace and your mercy. Thank you that you fight for us. Thank you that the victory is won through Jesus. Thank you that you didn't leave us to to try to make it through this world on our own. Thank you that you can help us to come out of darkness into light. God, I pray you'd help us to remember our why today. Lord, that we would remember, God, why, why, why we're going through this stuff and remember that while we're facing hard things, that we're not alone. That you're right by our side. Thank you for that today, Lord. We give you praise. Just keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed for one more moment. Some of you here or maybe you're watching online today, God's dealing with you right now. Hey, it's time to start, stop fighting in the darkness. It's time to start living in the light of Christ. It's time to remember your why, that Jesus came to provide a way for you to be rescued and saved. We talked about it last week, to be saved from death to be saved to life and to be saved through Christ and because of his love we can fight like a champion today if God's dealing with your heart I want to encourage you to just respond to him right where you're at before we close I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to to make a decision to follow Jesus maybe you've never done that before maybe you've done it as a child or or or, or chosen to follow Jesus, but somehow if you really examine your life today, you're not where you're supposed to be with the Lord. Today you can accept the love and the forgiveness of Jesus. You can come out of the dark and into the light. He can help you today. He still loves you. What He did on the cross matters. And so I want to invite you today to put your trust and your faith in Jesus. He's already paid the price for you. So you just need to say yes to Him. If that's you, I want you right where you're seated to pray this prayer with me. You can pray it out loud. You can pray it in your heart. It just mean business as you talk to the Lord right now. Just say this, dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for my sin. Please forgive me. Come live inside of me. Make me new. I receive your love. I receive your salvation. I make you my Lord, my Savior, my soon coming king I give you my life thank you for the hope that I have in you today in Jesus name Amen Amen. Come on let's celebrate those that prayed that today I just want to encourage you if you prayed that prayer today we'd love to come alongside of you there's a couple ways you can let us know while you prayed that prayer it's a private prayer between you and God the Bible says if you receive Christ you need to tell somebody you, know? you need to let somebody know what God is doing inside of you And so I just want to encourage you uh, one of the best ways you can do that is grab one of those connection cards nearby and you can just mark that on the back I'm making a commitment or I'm renewing my commitment to Christ just put your name, phone number and email on the front if you're watching online you can just email me prayer onehopechurch.org and I'd love to just celebrate with you what God is doing and know that uh, we're here to help you and pray with you. Just because you pray a prayer doesn't mean that everything's going to be perfect now. Life is a breeze. Now it's probably going to get a little bit harder I'll tell you. Because the enemy doesn't want you to commit your life to Christ. So he's going to be fighting you. So you need people around you to encourage you like a boxing match. You need somebody in your corner. You need a corner man. It's going to help you, encourage you, hold the spit bucket for you, help you. You need somebody, and we want to be that at one another. Why don't you stand? We're going to close with a blessing. We always do that. And, uh, after you fill that connection card out, you can drop it in one of the buckets. They're going to be at the back as you leave today just love to hear uh, hear from you and uh, if you don't get it in the bucket maybe see Jeff out at the hub 
you'll be standing there right near the kids check in and hand it in or you can hand it to Michelle or I we're going to be out at, in the lobby out here come out next week Mother's Day come on bring your moms bring your girlfriends bring your daughters bring your wives bring your girlfriends I'm bringing my girlfriend and my wife 30 years y'all Monday we celebrated come on I know she was young y'all we got it married in Georgia they didn't have the laws about no I'm joking I'm joking if you want a little blessing, you can put your hands out like this. If you want a big blessing, you can stretch out your hands like this. And we pray that the Lord would bless you, that the Lord would keep you, that his face would shine on you and show you his favor today. Hey, we love you. God bless you. Grace and peace to your house. That's our prayer for you today. Hey, see you next Sunday. Have a great week.